This is the Marantz PM8006 integrated amplifier. And what I wanna do in today's video is I not only wanna talk about what you get when you move from something like the 5005 to something like this, but I also just wanna talk about how this integrated sounds as a whole. So yeah, let's roll the intro. Right, guys so i'm going handheld for this section and as always before i talk about the sound i briefly want to summarize what it is that you get with this unit so in the case of the pm8006 what you're getting is a class a b integrated amplifier that outputs 70 watts into 8 ohms and 100 watts into 4 ohms it retails for 1200 us dollars and it's been around for a little over a year now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to look at the front of the unit and we're going to go over what you get starting from left to right on the bottom here, you're going to notice this button. There's going to be our power switch. It's a little bit loud. And when it comes on, you're going to notice that we get our blue LEDs illuminated. Up here, we have our input selector. Down here, we have a one-fourth phono out. I don't know how much power is given to the phono output stage just because the engineers wouldn't tell me. I'm assuming it's just normal two volts. Down here, we have tone controls for bass, mid-range, and treble. If I remember correctly, the bass is going to be at around 50 hertz. The mid-range is at 900 hertz, and the treble is at 15 kilohertz. Then we have our left-to-right channel balance. Up here we have speaker A and B switch. This amplifier can power up the four speakers at the same time, but if you connect four speakers to them, then you will need to make sure that they're 8 ohms or higher. Over here we have power amp direct, so if you want to use this as just a power amp, you can. And over here we have source direct. That's supposed to give you the clearest signal path possible. And over here we have our volume control. Now the volume control uses a potentiometer, but it's actually a digital volume control. So anyways, that's it for the front. Now let's look at the back. Okay, so here we go. And as you can tell, this is a pretty straightforward piece. On the back, we have our input for the built-in moving magnet phono stage. We have a dedicated pre-out. We have a power amp input. So basically, if you want to use this as an amplifier by itself, that's what you run your preamp to. We have one, two, three, four, five analog inputs. We have a record out. We have these giant speaker terminals here. They're actually silver coated brass and incredibly solid for what they are. We have a remote control input. And of course we have our IEC for the power cord. So that's it. And now let's take a quick look at the inside. All right, so here it is. And the first thing we're gonna look at is this nice 600 volt toroidal transformer that's very well shielded. Over here, you're gonna see our large aluminum heat sink. And interestingly enough, they have a cable running from the power board to the signal board, and they have it running across this PCB. It's kind of a unique solution there. We have some Nichicon capacitors. These are filter caps. I believe they're 18,000 microfarads a piece, which puts us at a total of 36,000 microfarads, which is okay. We have our potentiometer down here. We have a board, I believe this is gonna be our phono stage. And overall, it's a pretty solid piece. And now, let's talk about how it sounds. All right, so getting straight to it. The 8006 is gonna be for somebody who says, hey look, I have a budget of around $1,000. I want a full featured integrated amplifier. I want something that has enough power to drive most speakers well and average size listening space. And I want something that tonally kind of rides that balance between clarity and coloration. I want something that's honest, but at the same time, I don't want it to sound sterile. I want some coloration there. If that's you, then the 8006 is something worth considering. Now, to lay down this evaluation, I think the best place to begin is to give you all a little bit of context by summarizing my thoughts on the 5005 that I reviewed a while ago, because that's the entry into the Moran's lineup. And quite frankly, it has a very distinct sound. It's definitely not about accuracy. It's very enthusiastic. It has that classic V curve with boosted treble and boosted bass and quite frankly it's a sound that you're either gonna really really love or not so much. And the big question is how much of that character will you find in the 8006? And the answer is you'll find a little bit of it. So basically what Marantz has done is they've taken that character and they've basically matured it out quite a bit. It's nowhere nearly as extreme as what you find in the 5005. In fact, when Marantz designed this unit, they were really aiming for neutrality and clarity more than anything else. And that leads me to how the 8006 sounds. So if you're to take it home, it basically sounds 
like a modern day Moran amp. You're gonna find that the presentation still has that little bit of a V curve. The treble is gonna be elevated just a little bit. The bass is gonna be boosted. It's still gonna be on the forward side of neutral. There's still gonna be a little bit of warmth in the mid range and especially the bass. But overall, it's still gonna have that familiar sound. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break down the individual elements of the presentation and then we'll move on with the rest of the review. So let's start off with the treble. As I mentioned before, the treble is a little bit elevated, but honestly guys, as you see right here in a natural configuration, in a neutral configuration, I should say, it's not really that elevated. In fact, there are a lot of components at this price that are a lot brighter and more aggressive sounding along the top end. However, once you hit this button, the source direct button, the treble becomes very dominant. Now it's interesting because the source direct button is supposed to give you access to a clear signal path, but instead I notice it's like a loudness button for the top end. The gain goes through the roof, the treble becomes very much the center of the presentation. So the bottom line is this, if you like a lot of treble, hit that button. If you don't, the good news is, disable it and away you go. So now let's move on to the mid-range. The mid-range is what I found very surprising about this unit because for a full featured integrated at this price, it's remarkably neutral and there's a lot of clarity to the sound. I would say that if anything, it's voiced to be on the thinner side of neutral, but still, I think there's a lot of subtle information within the mid-range that you hear that you don't normally find with full featured integrated amps at this price point. It really does give you at least a taste of what high end is all about in that regard. Then we move on to the bass. The bass is classic Morantz. It's strong, it's powerful, it's not the last word in articulation, but honestly, this voicing is what a lot of people want for something at this price point. Now, let's move on to imaging. This integrated amplifier does a wonderful job of allowing speakers to have their own soundstage capabilities. So for example, if you have a set of like totem acoustic speakers, something that's known to lay down a holographic soundstage, this integrated amplifier will allow the speakers to do that in a way that I haven't heard from anything else at this price point. I mean, it is freakishly good and it's something I know a lot of you are gonna like. Moving on, let's talk about noise floor because a lot of full featured integrated amplifiers, typically there's gonna be a little bit of noise or hiss in the background, especially once you start getting really close to the loudspeakers. But with the 8006, it's really, really quiet. And this allows information to pop out quite effortlessly from the sound. And you're gonna notice this the most in the mid range and in the top end. Now, moving on, let's talk about dynamics. Dynamics is gonna be good. I wouldn't say the dynamics is amazing. So it can handle big bursts of information pretty well, but it's the micro dynamics, it's the subtlety is where this integrated amplifier starts revealing that it's more of a budget piece. And last, I wanna talk about its ability to pair well with a wide variety of loudspeakers because it didn't really matter whether I was listening to them, uh, to this integrated amp through totems or the triangles that I just got or Clips products or something that's on the total opposite end of that scale like Harbeth and Bacart that's warm and rolled off sounding. It actually paired well with all of it and it made for a consistently good listening experience, which honestly is what most of us want out of our hi-fi anyways. So overall, it's a very well-rounded piece, but obviously it's not gonna be for everybody and there's still gonna be some caveats to it. So yeah, let's get to that now. All right, so for this section, there's three things that I wanna mention, starting with number one, the bass. Now, if you're somebody who likes strong, warm sounding bass, then honestly, you're probably really gonna like what you hear out of the 8006. But if you're somebody who either has speakers that already have a lot of low end, or maybe you're somebody who's just really particular about bass and you want the quickest and most agile presentation possible, well, when you listen to this, you're probably gonna wish that it was just a little more resolving and a little quicker sounding. And while it has tone controls, that's not necessarily going to solve the issue. Next, let's talk about treble. Without touching any of the controls or touching source direct, the treble is actually still going to be on the forward side of neutral, but it's not really that aggressive. However, as I mentioned before, once you hit that source direct button, which is honestly what most of us do when we get something like this, I know I did it, and you're going to notice that the treble is going to be very prominent, if not bordering on aggressive. The good news is you can enable it, you can disable it to taste, but it's something that you do need to know about. And then lastly, I need to reinforce the fact that this is a full featured integrated amplifier, meaning that when Marantz builds this, a lot of money goes into tone controls and the circuits and all the other stuff that's built into this. So it's not gonna match the raw performance of a similar priced purest piece, like say the Dayans Minuetta, which by comparison, the Dayans is gonna sound more refined. 
it's going to be capable of revealing subtle information much more effortlessly than something like this. Still, I'm surprised by how close in performance Marantz has come to pieces like that. And of course, that leads me to my final thoughts. <laughs> All right, so as I wrap up my thoughts, there's a few things that I want to share with you all. Number one, to those of you wondering whether or not it's worth stepping up from the 5005 to the 8006, think of it like this. The 5005 has this rock and roll kind of sound. In fact, think of the 5005 as a rock star in his late teens and early 20s, whereas the 8006 is like the same rock star who's now in his mid-30s. Yeah, you're still going to get that rock and roll kind of sound. There's still that familiar tone, there's still that punch, all that good stuff. Except now with this unit, it's a lot more refined, it's a lot more mature sounding, and you need to ask yourself whether or not you're ready to go in that direction. Now, switching gears for a second, I want to briefly comment on how close full-featured integrated amps have come to bridging the gap between themselves and purest pieces. And by purest pieces, I'm talking about integrated amps that have no tone controls, nothing built in. It's just input, output, and volume control. There used to be this monumental gap between them at the same price point, but I noticed that that gap is beginning to close. Purest pieces still, of course, have a sound quality advantage, but I'm surprised by how close companies like Marantz are getting in overall performance to those pieces, while at the same time, offering all of these features. And that of course leads me to my final thoughts, which is I think the 8006 is a good unit. I think Marantz has done a very good job of finding that balance between musicality and something that has a sense of honesty to the sound. Now clearly, like everything else, nothing is perfect, nothing is for everybody. You still need to try it in your system to see if it's a good match for you. But I think Marantz did a good job with the 8006. And yeah, that's about it guys. Anyways, thanks for watching and as always, till next time. Peace. All right, so this bonus section goes out to those of you who really like comparisons. And because there's a lot to go over here, I'm going to try to keep everything as short and as sweet as possible. What you see right here is going to be the Heat Elixir Integrated Amplifier. Now, this piece retails for $1,400, which is just a little bit more expensive than the Marantz PM8006 at $1,200. Now, despite the differences in aesthetic, both of them are actually very similar to one another in a number of ways. For starters, both of them are Class AB amplifiers. Both of them have output power that's very similar with the Heat outputting 50 watts into 8 ohms and the Marantz outputting 70 watts into 8 ohms. And both of them are both designed and made in their country of origin with the Heed being made in uh, Hungary, if I remember correctly, and of course the Marantz being made in Japan. Now, beyond that though, there are gonna be, of course, some major differences in the case of business model. Marantz is a much larger company. They have a lot more capital to invest in R&D and the manufacturing process. Whereas Heat is more that classic esoteric business, a much smaller company, they don't have access to the same resources, at least at the same prices, but they nonetheless appeal to more of that niche audiophile market. Now, how do they compare when it comes to sound? Well, it's interesting because he designed the Elixir in particular to have this anti-audiophile sound where it's not about neutrality and accuracy and instead it's about having a presentation to where you just hook it into your system and then you forget about all the audiophile stuff and you just listen to your music. Whereas the Morant, that's going to be more your classic audiophile presentation. I mean, yeah, there's clearly still coloration going on, but that is more or less what Morant was going for with this unit is something that's more about balance and clarity. So how do they compare when it comes to sound? Well, unsurprisingly, they're pretty different from one another. So first, let's start off with the treble. Believe it or not, the Heat Elixir is a more forward sounding piece in the top end. The treble is going to be elevated compared to the Marantz. Unless, of course, you hit Source Direct on Marantz and then it becomes very treble happy. But leaving things as is, the Heat is going to have just a little bit more energy in the top end. The Marantz is going to be a little bit smoother by direct comparison. Now, moving on to the mid-range. The mid-range on the heat is going to be a little bit fuller sounding. It's just going to have a little bit more body and texture to the mid-range, whereas the Marantz is going to be a little cleaner, a little leaner sounding, and I feel like it's a little bit better revealing subtle little nuances than the heat. Moving to the bass, the bass on the heat is going to be warm in nature, but still a little bit quicker and cleaner than the Marantz. The Marantz is going to be stronger in terms of bass, but it's not necessarily going to be as quick and as agile as the heat. 
Imaging is very interesting. So the heed has more focus in its sound. So when you're listening to your setup, there's a lot more focus in between the speakers, but it doesn't really cast out this wide sound stage, or I should I say, it doesn't allow the speakers to cast a wide sound stage. Whereas with the Morant, if your speakers are capable of it, I mean, the presentation can get outright holographic. So it depends on what you want. Dynamics, I would give it to the Morants there, but neither one are really dynamic champions. And overall, just the music listening experience is different from them. The Morants is a little bit cleaner sounding, whereas the Heed's a little more rough around the edges but there's just that musicality to the sound that's very tough to define. So it just depends really on what you're looking for. Anyways, that's how these two stack up. Now let's talk about the other comparison. All right, guys, we're at the tail end here. I'm starting to lose my voice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly compare the Morant to the IOTA VX stack that I had a lot of nice things to say about not too long ago. Now, as a quick refresher, the IOTA VX stack consists of an integrated amplifier and a power amplifier that, when combined, retails for $900, US which is notably less expensive than the Morant's. Now, it'll output 100 watts into 8 ohms. And even though it was designed in the UK, it was manufactured in China. Now, let's talk about how they sound. And in short, they sound very very different from one another. The IOTA VX stack is a little better when it comes to integration between the main frequency brands. There's a lot more drive and power to the sound of the IOTA VX, whereas the Morantz is just a little bit more refined by comparison, just a little cleaner sounding. And what I'm going to do is we're going to break down everything into compartments here, starting with the treble. Believe it or not, the treble on the IOTA VX is going to be a little bit more forward, just a little bit more aggressive sounding, whereas the Morantz, at least until you hit Source Direct, is going to be a little smoother. And this is a bit of give and take, because if you're listening to something like, say, a guitar, you're going to notice on the IOTA VX stack that it does a better job of capturing the grit of a guitar, the actual natural sound of it. But the downside is if you listen to a poor recording, then that's more or less what you're going to get out of the IOTA VX stack, whereas at least on a poor recording, it's going to be a little smoother and a little easier to listen to on the Morant. So there's going to be a little bit of give and take there. Moving on to the mid-range. This is going to be a huge difference. The mid-range on the IOTA VX stack is going to be much larger in scale. There's going to be a lot more body and weight to the mid-range and just a lot more dimensionality there. Whereas the Morant, <laughs> I'm losing my mind at the end here. The mid-range on the Morant is going to be cleaner sounding. It's going to be a little more agile sounding, a little thinner sounding, and it just depends on what you want. Moving on to the bass, the bass is going to be just a little bit stronger on the Morant, but it's not going to be quite as articulate as it will be on the IOTA VX stack. When it comes to imaging, this is interesting. Both components allow speakers to image very well, but I'll give the edge to the Morantz there. I think the Morantz does a better job of allowing speakers to just do their thing. Not that the IOTA VX is bad in any way. When it comes to dynamics, this IOTA VX stack, I would say, is going to have a slight advantage there, although not as big of an advantage as you would think. Both components could be better when it comes to handling huge dynamic range, but, you know, that's just what you get with something in this general power class. But overall, I would say that they're good pieces. The IOTA VX stack is more about balance and having that drive to the sound. It's going to be a little bit more aggressive on the top end, whereas the Morantz is going to be a little bit smoother, a little bit cleaner in the mid-range. Uh, the bass is going to be stronger, so it just depends on what you want. But anyways, guys, I am done for the evening. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. As always, thanks for watching. And for real this time, peace.